Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone is doing great on this awesome Thursday morning. I'm here in the Wichita, Kansas area, and I hope wherever you are that you're having a great day as well. I'm John Roth, and I'm the president and CEO of the Wichita Regional Chamber of Commerce. And I'd like to welcome you this morning to the Fentanyl Crisis, the Business Impact Webinar. This is a very important topic, and I will tell you, uh, there isn't a day that goes by that, you know, I don't hear an, an unfortunate story. And it's something that is having a, a huge impact, uh, not only with individuals, with families, uh, in the business community. Uh, and it, it's just, it's not only in our Wichita region, but it's across our state. And in fact, it goes beyond that across the country. But first, I'd like to uh, give a big thank you out to our co-host uh, on this webinar with us. And that those co-hosts are the Greater Wichita Partnership. I know Jeff Floor is online, uh, who is the president and CEO of the Greater Wichita Partnership. Our other two co-hosts are Workforce Alliance of South Central Kansas, and President and CEO Keith Lawing, and the Wichita Independent Business Association, President and CEO Wendell Funk as well. We also want to thank, say thank you to the Wichita Metro Crime Commission and the Cedric County for reaching out to us to partner for this important topic that is affecting our business community. And this also happens to be Red Ribbon, Red Ribbon Week. So we're glad to be having this session uh, in an important week and an important month that focuses on a healthy community. Today, we're gonna to hear from our, our Sheriff, Central County Sheriff Jeff Easter, Nicole Gibbs from Central County Communications, Sharon Van Horn from the Wichita Metro Crime Commission, Diane Kano from Youth Educational Empowerment Program, and Stephanie Bur Birmingham, who will be our moderator for questions and answers. And at any time during the presentation, please feel free to use the chat, uh, or the question and answer function to submit questions for our speakers. Before we begin, uh, or as we begin our seminar and webinar here, I'd like to introduce uh, a special guest that we have the fortunate privilege of, of joining us today, Senator Roger Marshall, one of our two United States senators, is gonna set the stage and share a few comments uh, for what's happening at the national level with the fentanyl crisis. And he's also been involved in legislation and working uh, on addressing this crisis. And we're so pleased to have him joining us this morning. So Senator Marshall, we're pleased to welcome you. All right, well, good morning, everybody. Uh, I truly appreciate uh, everyone's leadership, the chamber's leadership, the Wichita Metro Crime uh, Commission, um, Sheriff Easter's leadership here. Certainly we live in a country now where it's easier to get fentanyl than it is baby formula. Recently, I've uh, done some traveling across the country, campaigning for other folks. It just amazes me that in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, some of the most beautiful malls uh, in America are now overran by, by, the, by drug pushers. Um, in Philadelphia, there's an open drug market. And we don't want Kansas to look like that, but it gets more dangerous every day. Um, go goodness, every day in America, over 100, probably two or 300 Americans are, a, die, a day are dying from fentanyl poisoning. It's now the number one killer of young adults. We've lost more young adults to fentanyl poisoning in the last year than we did the entirety of the Vietnam War. I don't have to tell folks on the call that 90% of this fentanyl is coming across our southern border. And certainly until we fix that border, we're sticking our finger in the, in the dikes. But if this conference helps prevent one person's death, then I, then I think it's worth, worth doing it. I'm sure you saw just yesterday uh, the Phoenix uh, Police Force or Sheriff's Office fixed up, picked up some type of a, of a new speckled colored candy looking a substance that's laced with fentanyl. Reports today that they now have flavored uh, fentanyl tablets out there. They're certainly targeting our youth targeting our young adults and anything we can do to help slow this down and prevent it is, is worthwhile. You know, legislatively, we've been working on this for several years. We took 
five sheriffs to the border just to help them get a picture of what's going on, to help see what the cartel looks like, how they're operating. At the federal level, we have been leading with several legislation. Uh, the Cooper Davis Act is named for a young, um, young 16-year-old junior who lost his life. They ordered some uh, two Percocet tablets online. He took half a tablet and died. So we are working to try to get the Snapchats of the work world to work proactively uh, with law enforcement. Uh, it's very similar to how they're handling human trafficking and child pornography. Uh, we're trying to make fentanyl a schedule one substance, which would give our law enforcement more officers. We're trying to make the cartel terrorists, which would allow the US Treasury to freeze their assets. So certainly there's, there's things we can do. Uh, I don't have an explanation why this is not a higher priority for, uh, for the White House, but we're doing everything we can to bring it to their attention, to work across the aisle. Our uh, Cooper Davis bill, working with Dianne Feinstein, a liberal Democrat from California who's very well connected to the social medias. So, you know, those are uh, some of the things we're working on. And, you know, so just, just realize that we are underestimating the problem, that they are certainly targeting young adults and youth. And this is the number one killer of young adults. So I think I'll stop there and just be a good listener. Thanks, everybody. Well, thank you, Senator Marshall, for being here. Um, I'm Jeff Easter with the Central County Sheriff's Office. I want to thank uh, the chamber for uh, hosting this event. Uh, and at this point, um, we'll start in with uh, the presentation and and. Uh, Chelsea, see if we can play the, the video. This would be how much cocaine somebody would have to ingest to kill them. This is the approximate number of prescription pills one would have to ingest to kill them. This is the amount of heroin the average person would have to ingest to kill them. Fentanyl. You're gonna to have to bring that camera up here real close to, to see it. This much fentanyl would kill you and I if we split it. They put fentanyl in cocaine. They put fentanyl in heroin. They put fentanyl, as we already know and talked about, into counterfeit pills. It's odorless, it's tasteless, you don't know it's there. And when you find out it's there, it's too late. You won't even know it, you'll be dead. Alex was in her bedroom at night, getting ready for bed. She went on social media in search of oxycodone. It wasn't hard for her to find a drug dealer. And she had what she thought was oxycodone delivered to our house. One pill had enough fentanyl to kill five people. My daughter took half of this pill and died instantly. In an instant, my life was changed forever. My last memory of my daughter is of her being wheeled out on a gurney saw my daughter brought into this world and I saw her leave this world. So uh, I welcome everybody online. I uh, appreciate you being here today. Um, this is a partnership uh, that started uh, several months ago between the Crime Commission, uh, YEEP, the Sheriff's Office, Police Department, uh, Mental Health Substance Abuse uh, Coalition, uh, in looking at how we can uh, develop a uh, awareness and educational campaign, mainly directed at the youth, parents, and teachers, uh, because we are experiencing this problem uh, in uh, Wichita. The number one drug here for years has been methamphetamine, and fentanyl has absolutely taken over the market here. Uh, and so I'll share with you some statistical information, but uh, originally, you know, fentanyl was developed as a cancer uh, patient management uh, tool. It is now, we're, we have seized fentanyl, uh, laced marijuana, heroin, cocaine, methamphetamine, 
um, about any type of drug now is being laced. And so um, it, it's very important to understand how deadly this drug is and it's affecting, it doesn't matter what race you are, gender, socioeconomic is, issues, it, it is affecting everybody. Next slide, please, Chelsea. And so what this is depicting is uh, our fentanyl related deaths from 2021 compared to 2022 uh, by age. And so you have the age broke down below. As you can see, we had 146 uh, fentanyl related deaths uh, in uh, 2021. And so um, in 2022, you know, it's only showing 70. The problem there is, is that it takes almost six months, three to six months to get the toxicology reports back. And we have a hundred cases that are suspected to be over uh, to, to be fentanyl overdose deaths. And so we're probably going to be well above of what we had in 2021. Next slide, please. Um, when we look at uh, fentanyl related deaths compared to other drugs, we have seen this drug in the community since about 2018. Uh, as you can see, it has slowly risen uh, over the, the course of five years. And again, the 33 number is just the confirmed fentanyl-related deaths uh, that have come back from toxicology. Uh, at you know, the, about the middle of the year, uh, with the amount that we were seeing as quickly as we we're seeing, we thought we would be around um, 300. Uh, and when we talk about other counties, that's the surrounding counties of Cedric County that the Forensic Science Center produces or conducts autopsies on. Uh, so you can see we're well almost to 300 in 2021. Uh, and so uh, this is a, a trend that is here and it's getting worse by the day. Next slide, please. When we talk about positive exhibits, um, what we're talking about there is the amount of fentanyl cases or cases that the local law enforcement here is seizing fentanyl on. And so, uh, it, like I said, it used to be all methamphetamine. Uh, at this point, it's almost all fentanyl. And as you can see by the cases being generated, in August, we had 235 cases alone just in fentanyl. Uh, if you watch the news lately, uh, the police department uh, recently see, made a seizure of almost a million pills uh, right here in this community. We have done search warrants, we've made car stops, those type of things. And we're well over 500,000 pills that we've seized this year uh, just from the sheriff's office alone. So it is a, uh, at ep epidemic levels. And what we're seeing is, is we're having a lot of deaths uh, when it comes to the juveniles or the youth. Uh, and we've had two baby deaths this year uh, where the, the children were two years old uh, and their parent had left a fentanyl laced pill uh, out in the open and they swallowed it and died from it. Next slide, please. So I'll turn it over to uh, Nicole Gibbs where we're gonna talk about what we came together on as a campaign to move forward with the education and with the um, aware, making people aware of fentanyl and the deadly dangers behind it. Nicole? Good morning, thank you, Sheriff. Uh, again, I'm Nicole Gibbs. I work uh, with Central County Strategic Communications. We also have Stephanie Birmingham along and she has been a partner in this process. Next slide, please. The main role of Strategic Communications has been background and to make sure that the Sheriff and all the partners have the materials that they need to continue push this very important message. The first place that we started is building a website. You can see the link above, sedgwickcounty.org slash drug misuse. And on the right hand side, or at the top in the middle, basically uh, the last tab says fentanyl. So if you go and get a chance to look at this, you can see a lot of the information we've compiled about fentanyl. But the other benefit that we found in putting it on this specific dashboard is the partnership with our health department as they're tracking statistics, and they have prevention resources and treatment and recovery options that are all in one spot. So anybody anywhere can look and find multiple avenues of information for whatever their need is. Um, you may see that this link will change here in the next couple weeks. We are working on a small redesign of this website. And so uh, don't be afraid when you see it differently than what you would today if you checked it out. Go ahead, next slide, please. 
The other piece as we went along, um, as with any campaign, we wanted to do print materials. We originally got requests internally for posters for folks to hang up around their areas, uh, specifically in the Department of Corrections. And as we have continued our campaign of partnerships and awareness, folks are wanting to hang them in their businesses. Um, also, the schools have been very interested in learning more about this and being able to share quick information, not only with students, but parents. And you could definitely learn more about the student role of this after my piece of the presentation. Next slide. We have also produced a couple videos. Uh, this one we're gonna show you is about emojis and uh, drug code that students are actually using and kids are using to find out. So go ahead, Chelsea. Hi, I'm Amanda Allen. I'm a high school teacher with over five years of experience in the classroom. We all know that texting and emojis are very popular these days, especially among teens. But what you may not know is how these symbols are being used as a secret language to traffic drugs. Certain emojis when put together represent an illegal drug like meth, cocaine, and heroin. There are even codes for prescription pills like Percocet and Oxycodone that are often laced with deadly fentanyl and meth. By texting these emoji combinations, someone can set up a drug deal. And even if their parents see the message, chances are they won't know what it means. Take a moment to learn these codes and talk to your kids about the dangers of drugs. Open communication is the first step in keeping them safe because one pill can kill. We're very thankful to have this network put together of resources. Um, Amanda is actually related to Sharon Van Horn and she connected us and has also had a lot of opportunity in the schools and she works at the high school level to understand and know this. This is also going to be, this slide right here is going to be provided to you afterwards, and it shows you the four different videos that we've put together at Cedric County, along with one that's in Spanish. Um, you can also see the, uh, the video that you first saw, the actual full documentary. It's the second QR code on this list, and we also talk about our partners, which is on the right. Next slide. Recently, we held a press conference uh, on September 8th. We kicked off this event at a place called the Phoenix. It's a really great recovering place for folks to go um, exercise, learn more about themselves, and go through the process. Uh, we partnered with all local first responders, um, varying from fire, police, EMS, and anyone in the area, they came, um, we were able to have that rep representation, very thankful to have them. Um, each person that came to our uh, press conference, including the media, was able to walk away with a packet of information. On the top right, you can see some of the examples that were in our packet. And one of the most powerful pieces of our press conference is we actually had the ability to invite a family that was brave enough to share their story um, about their son that had recently passed from fentanyl. Um, Stephanie was a big player in connecting this family and bringing them along. So I'm gonna let her share a little bit about the family and how their role played in this press conference. All right, thank you, Nicole. Yes, Christy and Keith McAuliffe have been very proactive since the death of their son. They are wanting to warn other parents and they bravely agreed to share their story. Their son, uh, Keith Jr was just 19 when they found him dead in his bedroom and they are convinced he did not know he was taking fentanyl. He took a half a Percocet, but it had enough fentanyl on it to kill him. So uh, we know that this really is where the issue is hitting. It's families, it's folks that don't think their child would ever be involved in something like this. So we felt like more than printed materials, more than anything, we need to hear from those families. And we are just so grateful to the McAuliffe's and other families who are sharing their story and, and warning others. Nicole. Thank you, Stephanie. And as we both said, these families are extremely brave in sharing their story and we can learn from them. And unfortunately, they, they and their children had to pay the ultimate price. Next slide, please. We are now going to pass it on to Don Cano with the Youth Educational Empowerment Program. Um, in case you have heard the phrase YEEP before, this is what we mean when we talk about them. So Don, you are up.
Good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you to the Senator, Sheriff Easter, Nicole, Stephanie, everybody that's joined us in this fight. I'm going to actually hand it over to our founder, Marquise Murphy. He founded YEEP, and he can tell you a lot more about the program and what we're doing. Awesome. Thank you so much, Don. And again, we are excited to be here to be a part of this. Again, my name is Marquise Murphy, the founder of the Youth Educational Empowerment Program, and we're the parent company of Team View Magazine. And so our part in this it was that we use our TeamView magazine to have a platform for young people to showcase um, their talents and share the things that are important to them. And uh, we were able to use uh, the TeamView magazine to discuss the dangers of fentanyl that's plaguing our young people. And so uh, we... You have to tell her. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> so we put together a thing called um, Riverside High, that'd be on the next slide. Riverside High is our is a made up school that the kids are able to deal with different uh, subjects. And in this series for about 10 episodes, which would be in each magazine that comes out once a month, um, they're, we're dealing with how the drugs and how things are happening inside the school setting. Um, and so it's really unique. And I would really like, if you could go to the next slide, you'll see some of the different things that, well, so this right here is actually uh, one of the videos that the kids uh, helped us write the script and use their language and the different things that they're doing. And since we were talking about the emojis, uh, this right here is going to kind of show how they're coming about the emojis is how they respond to each other. So we go ahead and play this and you can see how this is working. On the last episode of Riverside High, we introduced you to Sabrina. She was new to Riverside High and trying to fit in. Her counselor found some information about the reason she moved to Riverside High, but Sabrina is not ready to share her past with everyone just yet. But we all know how news travels fast. Does someone at Riverside High already know Sabrina's secret? How will everyone react? How long will she be able to keep her secret before everyone knows about it? It's lunchtime at Riverside High, and Sabrina is looking around the cafeteria to see who she can sit with. Uh, who should I sit with? Hey, you can come sit with us. Hey y'all, this is Sabrina. Girl, sit down. How's your day been? Oh, it's okay. There was this one guy in my class who wouldn't shut up. He just kept, hey! Sabrina, this is my BFF Jasmine and her baby Lucas. Any of you got any perks? Ew, Jason, why are you even over here? So you got any or what? I'm trying to get ready for this party coming up. You know I don't do none of that. You gotta talk to Bones. Tap in with him. He the plug. I bet I'll hit him up after school. Thanks for the help, shoddy. Ew, get out of here, Jason, before I throw up. That's Jason. He's I. Right. He always do too many drugs for my taste. He always be looking for something. I mean, it's okay to do some stuff, I guess. But dang, how much do you need though? Do you do anything? Uh, n no, I don't do anything. You good, girl? Uh, yeah. Why do you ask? Because you got all quiet on me for a second. Plus, I noticed them looking at you. What's up? Why did you really move here? I told you, I just needed a new start. Well, it looks like your old life is catching up to you. Spill it. It's a long story. Somebody... Oh my god, this can't be true. Brandon got in a car accident on the way to school. He didn't make it. 
What? I was just texting him. Social media is one of the leading sources of teens today getting and abusing prescription drugs. Snapchat, Facebook, and other social media platforms are poisoning thousands of teens by providing them access to prescription drugs that are laced with fentanyl. Buying any kind of drugs on social media is a bad decision, and if you do it, it could be the last decision you ever make. So in our Team View magazine, we cover that as well as so you can see it kind of being here. So the kids get to pick up the magazine and they can read it. And, and, and we talk about information that's right. In, in fact, they wrote the script. So it's their language. It's their um, experiences. And so we give them that platform to really discuss it. Here you'll see on our last slide here that uh, we're covering these different points and we're talking about it and bringing discussion into the school. The one other thing that I'm very excited to talk uh, to share is that uh, in the video that you saw um, Dead on Arrival, we have uh, some of the people from that video going through this week because of Red Ribbon Week, going to about, I believe, 13 different schools and giving 13 presentations, including this Friday. If you wanted to hear and see that video in full, um, we'll be at Hubbard Hall at WSU at seven o'clock to give more, six o'clock, six o'clock, to give them more details on that. So this is what we're doing to really um, focus on the young people, but more importantly, using the young people to actually carry the message amongst their peers. That's what we have. Thank you. All right, well, thank you very much. Uh, kind of to wrap up uh, what uh, we're doing as, as a group, it's very important to understand that kids communicate in a, in a different manner. They're not going to listen to government or uh, the adults. And so that's why YEEP is such a very important partner here because they're reaching out to the youth. Uh, and we've reached out uh, to numerous, diff in numerous different platforms to reach the youth. But what also is important is the videos that have been created that are the same exact type of message, just delivered in a different way uh, to the adults. And so what else we have to understand is, is that uh, for our youth, is we're, we're really trying to target this message right now, uh, is a lot of them do not understand what they're buying. Uh, they really believe uh, that they're buying a Percocet. That used to be big in the schools, same with Adderall. If you don't know what Adderall is, it's an ADHD medicine uh, that doesn't get you high, but helps you focus. Well, fentanyl is now being laced in all these drugs. And there is thousands and hundreds of thousands of people that have died from overdose just this year. And we've had several in the Wichita Sedgwick County area, juveniles that have uh, passed away uh, due to the fentanyl poisonings that did not know what they were buying. And so that's why it's so important that we get this information out. Next slide, please. I'm Sharon Van Horn. I am with the Wichita Metro Crime Commission. And uh, four years ago, Sheriff Easter came to us and said, can you help us uh, put together a drug education program for our youth. It is overcoming our community and we have got to get the message out to these young people. So as a part of that partnership, the Crime Commission has been a part of the Fentanyl Awareness Project. We've done two or three things to help move that awareness along. Um, we, uh, through Crime Stoppers, which is a program of the Crime Commission, we have offered a guaranteed reward of $2,500 for any tip that leads to the arrest of a fentanyl wholesale dealer. We've also put banners in middle schools and high schools throughout Sedgwick County that says one pill can kill because that is the message these kids need to know. They don't know they're taking fentanyl. They don't mean to die, but one pill can kill. And we've also contributed to the marketing materials for the campaign because the way you reach these kids is through social media. It's not by people my age telling them, it's about people their own age telling them. Next slide, please. 
The other thing that we are doing is an ongoing drug education program that is targeting fifth graders, uh, excuse me, middle schoolers, because we know sixth, seventh, and eighth is kind of the years that a lot of kids start experimenting. So we've got a whole program planned. On November 9th, just a couple of weeks away, we are having the Teen Drug Summit. That summit will bring together nearly 200 middle school students from all over Sedgwick County for the day. And they are going to have all kinds of sessions to talk to those who have recovered from being addicts, from family members who have lost kids to fentanyl, because these kids need to realize the impact that they are making on their families when they take that risk and that they should not take any pill unless it's something that their parents give them. We um, are also doing a couple of fun things. We have an ongoing program called Facts and Fun. So in December, we're going to take a bunch of middle schoolers to uh, Botanica and take them through Illuminations. And Yeep, who is our partner in this program, has come up with some really fun educational things. And in February, we're going to do an I Am Love skate on the ice rink out at Chicken and Pickle. Again, all these programs are developed to give kids a fun opportunity that they maybe would not have and also to get that drug education message to them. I would join ask you to join us in this critical program. We have to get this message out to our students, to our parents, uh, to businesses because it is affecting everyone. Um, if you want more information on how you could help with the Crime Commission programs, my email is on the slide, and we would love to talk to you about how we are joining the fight to save our kids. Thank you. Next slide, please. Next one, too, please. Uh, to wrap up here, one of the reasons that we wanted to meet with, with each one of you, the groups that are on today uh, is the traditional ways of trying to um, get this information out with billboards and those type of things. That's just not good enough. Uh, and so we wanted to reach out to you all as the business leaders here because you have this problem in your uh, business, uh, whether it be uh, an employee themselves, uh, their family member, their children, um, we would really want uh, you all to take, consider um, putting some of this information on your websites. And we can supply that information uh, to you uh, to be able to place on your websites where there is uh, the fight fentanyl aspect from YEEP, uh, the strategic communications uh, drug misuse dashboard where they can find out everything they need to know, or the uh, one pill can kill uh, campaign put on by uh, DEA and the federal government, which gives tons of information and resources uh, to deal with this issue. But the biggest thing is um, you have to have discussions with your children uh, because this is there. And so that's something that if you're interested in, uh, we can reach out to communications or myself at jeffrey.easter at sedgwick.gov. Uh, if you could put articles or videos, we can supply some of this information that we're giving you for those. Uh, we've created banners and posters that have gone out to the school systems uh, and are continuing to go out to the school systems that uh, was paid for by the Crime Commission. If that's something you want in your workplace, we can supply that the art for it. Um, from a financial st support, this is not something that can be just a flash in the pan. It is not something that we can just throw some resources at it for four or five months and then say, hey, we're good. This has got to be a continuous, uh, ongoing uh, campaign. And the reason being for it is, is we uh, were fortunate during the heroin ap epidemic that kind of came through uh, during COVID that really destroyed communities on the East Coast and West Coast. Um, again, it was mainly methamphetamine here, but we're not going to avoid this one. Uh, and one of the reasons why is fentanyl is so cheap to buy. It's $8 a pill. And so are the fake fentanyls uh, is $8 a pill. Our narcotic section the other night bought it for $3 a pill. That is very cheap and it's very uh, something that the youth uh, can pay for. They have enough money to get those type of things. And so we're asking if you want to provide any type of financial support to continue this campaign, uh, to either donate to the uh, Wichita Metro Crime Commission uh, or to the Youth Educational Power Empowerment Program or YEEP. Uh, the last thing that I will tell you is uh, the video, Dead on Arrival, uh, assisted with the presentation out at Goddard Eisenhower, and uh, it was 
one of the most impactful videos I've ever seen uh, and the presentation. And so if that's something that you want to take a look at, all you have to do is go to stopthevoid.org and be able to view that video. Next slide. Uh, the fact of the matter is we need your help. And so here is, uh, if you go back to the previous slide, uh, here is some of the websites that you can log on to uh, to get more information on fentanyl itself. Uh, and so with that, uh, I'll turn it over to Jeff Fleur to finish this up. Thank you very much for being here today. Sheriff Easter, we just thank you, sir, for all the work that you and your team are doing and, and all the panelists are doing uh, in, to address this crisis. And we appreciate the opportunity to be uh, one of the organizations bringing this uh, webinar out to the business community this morning. So again, thank you for, for the things that you've already mentioned, sir, that we can do as a community to take proactive steps. Uh, again, you know, meet with your employees and, and share the presentation. Uh, you'll be getting a link to this uh, presentation uh, later on through an email. Uh, as the sheriff has said, you know, articles and videos uh, to your employee newsletters, you know, direct links, whatever you can do, poster banners uh, in your break rooms. Again, just to increase the awareness uh, to make sure this is being talked about, because again, if it's being talked about, then we can take some proactive action to help protect uh, your employees, but also uh, your employees' families. Um, Cedric County Communications uh, is always a great uh, portal uh, for information. So communications at uh, sedwick.gov uh, uh, is another source for you. And also additionally, the links that the sheriff uh, mentioned. Uh, again, we do, as we conclude today, appreciate uh, a number of partners coming together, the Wichita Chamber of Commerce, Workforce Alliance of South Central Kansas, and the Wichita Independent Business Association to bring today's webinar to you. And then also to the, all the many presenters, uh, Senator Roger Marshall, uh, Senator Easter, uh, Wichita Metro Crime Commission, uh, Cedric County uh, Communications, and then also the Youth Education Empowerment Program. We again appreciate everyone sharing today the information that we received. Uh, and lastly, you will be receiving an email later uh, with this information as far as a link. Uh, and there's also uh, a survey about the uh, information you received today to hopefully help us as we go forward as well. So again, thank you for joining us today. Uh, and we look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you. We do have some time left. So we'd like to open this up for questions. Anything that you maybe don't understand about fentanyl, if you're wondering where to get more resources, uh, just type a question into the Q&A or the chat box and one of our panelists will address it. We do already have a question from Matt Peterson. It's a great question. Why is fentanyl so popular? And Sheriff Easter, you touched on this a little bit. It's very cheap, but there are some other things that appeal to kids about fentanyl, isn't there? Yeah, there is. I mean, there are most of Again, most of the kids don't know that what they're taking. Uh, they think that they bought a Percocet pill or an Adderall or a Xanax, so they do not know. Uh, for whatever reason, um, you know, we're becoming a very drug addicted country, uh, and this community has a lot of drug addiction issues. Uh, and so, with that, it it when it becomes a cheap drug to to take, you will have kids that actually ask for it. Uh, adults ask for fentanyl laced pills because of the high that you get is so intense and they're looking for that next best high. Uh, so, uh, you know, it is, it is a cheap drug. Uh, it is something that uh, can, is manufactured very easily. And I can't reiterate enough, um, you know, what Senator Marshall talked about, this is all coming from the, the uh, Mexican cartels and they're all about business and whoever they can get addicted, if they lose some along the way, they're going to make it up with the addiction of everybody else that survives. Hey, this Senator Marshall, could I comment on that? You bet. Hey, uh, let's just talk about fentanyl just for a second. So this is a drug that we use in the operating room. Uh, it, it works by decreasing pain, but it makes you stop breathing. Okay, so to take a to take a you know and just a small like a pencil lead size of fentanyl would be, would be the equivalent of taking fifty or a hundred. Percocet tablets. The difference is in the operating room, we're breathing for you already. So this makes people stop breathing. This drug must be very addictive. And that's the cartel's goal here is to get, get kids addicted. So they're taking a, take a Percocet tablet and it doesn't give you near the buzz, near the high, something about the fentanyl. And it, it, it must be more addictive, <laughs> let alone it's very dangerous. 
And again, another big difference in the operating room versus out in the street is we can control exactly how it was made, how much is in, in, in an ounce of fluid uh, versus one group of Percocet tablets may have a little, a lot, or hardly any in it. So it's very addictive. It's very cheap. Um, so something, you know, this is kind of their, their answer to the opium war. They want to destroy America. They, the Chinese, want to destroy America through this, uh, through this fentanyl war. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Senator. We've gotten a couple of great questions, and I think I'm going to direct these to Don with Yeep. Uh, someone asked, what am I looking for in my child's social media? Are there clues? We talked about some of those emojis. Are there words? Are there combinations of emojis they need to be looking for? Also, how do I get someone to come and talk to our youth group? Thank you. Those are actually really great questions. We're in the process of working on uh, putting together a website that's specifically going to have tools for parents and help you realize and see what you need to know about what your kids are doing and how to really get in their business and know exactly what they're doing. So as soon as that is made available, we will get with you. Um, we did reach out to all middle school, high schools, and colleges in the area. We're hitting 13 of those this week with our speakers. Goddard High was one of the ones. Um, we will be speaking at West High School tomorrow, South High School tomorrow. South High School just had an overdose in their bathroom last Thursday. So we're getting here just in time. But there is so much more to be done. So if you would like for us to come out and speak to your students, speak to your youth group, speak to your church, speak to, we don't care if it's a group of 10 or 20 students. The word has to get out there because this is the only way we're going to save our kids. And you can do that by reaching out to Don um, here with the email that was provided, and um, we'll be we'll be honored to come in and share. One thing we have not talked about yet, and I think it's really important, and I'm going to direct this to the sheriff to answer. Let's talk about Narcan, the medication that reverses the effects of a fentanyl overdose. Sheriff. Who should be carrying Narcan? Where do we get it? And are there legal implications for using it? Okay, so I'll kind of go backwards there. Uh, there is no legal um, issues with using it. Uh, I highly suggest that if you don't have it at your businesses, you get it um, because it is a medicine that can immediately reverse the effects of an opioid overdose, which fentanyl is an opioid. And so, uh, but understand that just one uh, dose of Narcan might not do the trick. We had an overdose inside the jail. It took four administrations of the Narcan to bring the uh, in individual back. And so right now it's kind of difficult to get. Uh, there is uh, Safe Streets here in Wichita uh, has it uh, along with DECA, but to cover themselves, they also put on a training when they when they give the Narcan out. Uh, and so we can provide some more information to the chamber on how exactly, if that's something that you're looking for uh, in your business or even at your house, or to be able to tell other people that maybe uh, have this issue going on uh, where they can get the Narcan. Another great question John Rolfe is asking, I know many kids are being targeted but what about adults? Anything employers should watch for? Chair, if you want to take that question. Well, I don't want to dominate the conversation here, but, um, you know, it is, uh, fentanyl is something that um, when you take it, uh, it will uh, create an intense high for you. Uh, when you're not on it, uh, you can act normally. Um, and so, but when you start seeing people, uh, their work product is going downhill fairly quickly. Uh, they're tired a lot of the times. Uh, they are not coming to work. Uh, you find out they're making excuses that probably are not correct with what exactly is going on. Uh, you hear other employees talk about possible, uh, what the, some of the things that they see if they take it at work. Um, you're gonna, they're gonna be very lethargic. Uh, hard to hold uh, meaningful conversations, those type of things. So that's kind of what you look for. 
I'd like to address a question to Sharon Van Horn about the Teen Drug Summit. I know, Sharon, you're having some breakout sessions, you're having some family members come in and speak. Can you give us a little insight? How do we talk to our kids? How do we broach the subject? What are some effective ways to get kids talking about what they're seeing in their schools? This will be the uh, second drug summit that we've done with the kids. And the feedback from the first one said what they enjoyed most and learned the most from were stories. So that's why the breakout sessions are so important. They um, are the stories from those uh, families who have lost a child to fentanyl. Uh, the, the mother you talked about, Stephanie, is going to be one of our speakers. And they have these kids have to understand that they are taking a pill to get high, but that pill could kill them. And by talking to those kids who have perhaps had an overdose and have been drug addicts and have recovered, or parents whose kids have had a drug overdose and they were not drug addicts, they took a pill because somebody gave it to them or like the sheriff said, thought it would make them feel high. So talking to those people um, really is impactful for these kids. The other thing that's really informational for them is getting to talk to the providers, getting to talk to the DEA and the um, police department and the sheriff's department and other providers. And these guys do a great job of breaking it down to what these kids understand and need to know. Um, and the last thing we do, which I think is the most important thing um, of the whole day, is once all the the seminars have been gone to and the pizza has been eaten, we get the kids together in their group and we say, okay, what are you going to do in your school? Tell us what you are doing to take this back to your school and spread this information. And from that, we get the kids' perspective on whether they're going to do a video, have a social media campaign, set up uh, programs maybe through some of their in-school clubs, so this really puts it back on the kids. We say to these kids, this can kill you and it can kill your friends. So what are you going to do to make sure that you all help everybody know about this? That's a great event. Thank you, Sharon. Another event we mentioned a little bit was the event tomorrow night at WSU. Yeep is scheduling that. Don, can you tell us a little bit more? I know the two fathers featured in that Dead on Arrival documentary are, are part of that event. So if you want to hear more from them, uh, you can go to, to that talk tomorrow. Can you give us a little more detail? Definitely, we'd love to. Um, tomorrow evening at six o'clock, we'll be at Hubbard Hall in room 208. We will have um, two of the parents, Steve and Jaime, who have come from California and have done multiple presentations for us this week and we still have multiple presentations left for the rest of the week but we're visiting third we've visited 13 schools so far we've done middle schools high schools a couple of colleges and their goal and in losing their children was to be able to reach these kids to reach the kids so tomorrow night if you come out to wsu you'll be able to view the entire documentary you'll be able to get an up close and personal look at how this has affected their lives and what they're doing to make changes. You can ask them questions. You can see what we're doing with Riverside High, meet some of our kids. You actually have the opportunity to text fight in to 54244 to get resources. It's just so important to see what our kids are doing to make this campaign a peer-to-peer -peer campaign that they can take back to their schools and save the lives of their friends. And I think Senator Marshall has something to share as well. Yes, so, Senator Marshall, go ahead, please. Yeah, hi, everybody. This is a question for the sheriff, and if the, maybe if there's someone from the county attorney's office present, most every one of these deaths that we've discovered have been accidental, that they've been poisoning, as opposed to a person who takes a bunch of sleeping pills commit, committing suicide. These are accidental poisonings. So my question for the sheriff is, if we could try these as murder, um, and go after the, the pushers at, with, with more, with, with, with a higher sentencing uh, type of uh, opportunities as well. Would that be helpful? And have you had any conversation with the county attorneys about this type of approach? Yeah, I appreciate that question. Um, two things. Uh, there is a law in the books that uh, distribution of narcotics that causes death. Um, 
is a very uh, it's it's a form of murder um, because you can't prove first degree or second degree. That's also on on the federal uh, side as well, federal code. And so recently, last week, uh, we were able to uh, we were investigating a overdose or a uh, fentanyl poisoning of a young man. Uh, and was able to come in to enough information where we arrested the actual drug dealer who was 18 uh, for that particular statute. And so law enforcement is trying to catch up on how uh, we can uh, hold people accountable that knowingly sell pills or fentanyl um, and know that that's inside the pill. Now, it's very difficult. It's not going to be the easiest cases um, because the only one usually left is the drug dealer. And all they got to say is I had no idea it was in there. Uh, but it's uh, you know incumbent upon us to gather all the evidence necessary uh, to be able to prove they did know it was in there and they sold it, which caused this overdose. And so the laws are on the books. I think there's some other things that we could do, uh, both federally and from state legislature uh, to create some other laws that can hold these folks accountable for when they, for selling this particular drug and killing people. All right, thank you, Sheriff. And to all of the panelists, we don't have any more questions at this time, but if something comes to mind later that you want to ask, um, you can reach out to any of us or the chamber. We're going to also be sending you some information, um, summarizing some of what we've talked about today. So again, knowledge is power. And the more we can get the word out, the better um, we're going to inform our kids about the danger out there. Chelsea, I'll hand it back to you. Thank you, Stephanie. And again, thank you to everyone that participated in this. Thank you to the Workforce Alliance of South Central Kansas, the Wichita Independent Business Association, and the Greater Wichita Partnership for supporting this effort, and especially Senator Marshall, Sheriff Easter, Sharon Van Horn, Don, and Heath. We appreciate you sharing your insight. Later today, you will receive an email with a survey. We appreciate your feedback on this webinar. And you'll also receive links to the videos that you saw today the presentation, as well as some of that artwork that Nicole talked about that you could get printed and hang up in your office spaces. If you do have questions, like Stephanie said, reach out, let us know, and we'll help connect you as well. Thanks so much and have a great rest of your day.